How are you? Good morning. Are you well? Not you. <laughs> Every time I do that, <laughs> do you hear that in the background? You're squeaking the teddy bear, you are. She's squeaking her teddy bear. Good morning and uh, welcome to this madness. Um, first of all, I noticed uh, a few donations there and I want to thank you for them. To Maxine or thanks for your donation. Uh, and don't say you wish it could be more, Maxine, because that's terrific. That's, that, that's a huge big deal to me. So thank you. Thank you to Matt in Massachusetts and to Cromwell Bear. I really appreciate that. I made an appeal last night for some support at the end of the radio show. And thanks to those of you who did support the program last night and set up new recurring donations. I really appreciate it. I've had a couple of um, messages from people asking about bank transfers because people don't want to use PayPal. And I totally understand that. If you go to richieallen.co.uk, that's richieallen.co.uk, there are Halifax bank details there. And if you want to set up a small monthly re recurring um, donation, please do so. So I appreciate that. I think I was very moderate last night and very honest about the financial implications for making programmes like these. And I was just pointing out that, you know, the vast majority of people who do listen, in case you missed the radio show, um, never make any contribution. And many of them can afford to do so. But I think they just take for granted radio shows like mine, not just like mine, but, but like others. And they don't realise that it's a full-time gig. I'm not going to dwell on this because I spent 10 minutes talking about it at the end of the programme yesterday. And I laid out just exactly what goes into making a full-time radio show. So if you want to hear it, check out the tail end of the um, programme yesterday. It's a good programme yesterday, really interesting stuff from Hayden Hewitt from liveleak.com and trigger warning about vaping and also Stephen Lendman about the United States alleged pull out, of the, pull out from Syria. That's the radio show which is Monday to Thursday at 5 o'clock. So to those of you who have made contributions yesterday on the back of that, I appreciate it. And um, you know, I can't say any more than that really. If you want to make a bank transfer and you want those details, the number, the sort code and the number is at richieallen.co.uk. You know I... Uh, very, very, very rarely have have I asked for financial support. I do once in a blue moon. I did yesterday. And if you are somebody who isn't financially stable and if you've got issues with money, don't worry about it. Forget about it. You know, don't think, don't give it a second thought. Um, the, this program, excuse me, the radio program will never be put behind a firewall. Paywall, firewall. <laughs> we all need firewalls. Uh, paywall ever, no matter what. And that's all I'm going to say about that this morning. So um, thanks for showing a bit of concern about it. I, I appreciate it. Good morning anyway. Um, we'll have a look through the papers now. Uh, yeah, Brexit-centric again, I think, the papers today. But inside the papers, there are some very interesting stories that kind of tally with many of the themes of the radio show and many of the guests that we bring on. So I want to get into uh, to that to some of those stories now in a minute. I will keep an eye on the chat there, by the way. Um, so I will come back and read some of your comments as we go along. But without further ado, let's jump into um, the front pages of the papers. And the Telegraph is the first one up this morning. Brexit deal now essentially impossible. Obviously, this was discussed at length on the radio show yesterday. Uh, telephone conversations between the government in the guise of Boris Johnson and the German Chancellor, Angela Merkel, didn't go very well. And Merkel, according to number 10 sources, said that there's no chance of your proposals getting, you know, getting by the European Union. So, so there you are, effectively. There isn't much more to say on that, really. Um, other than, none of this comes as any great surprise to you or to me. Does it? We kind of know where all this is heading, don't we? So the European Council President Donald Tusk tweeted yesterday. This is very, very interesting, this, isn't it? Twitter diplomacy. And I know every now and then I, I, I do tend to repeat myself, so I won't. But the evolution of Twitter diplomacy and spats between world leaders on Twitter and not behind closed doors is all for the benefit of the global population to re-instill in them a conviction that this stuff really matters, 
that you're a part of it, that it's one great big movement, it's a big drama, and you're essentially involved in it. Because of social media, we have begun in recent years to invest ourselves more in public life and in this idea, this belief that we're, you know, we're all part of this, we've got a say in it, we've got a real say, and it's kind of reconnected us with politics. Again, I won't bore you because I've said this a million times now. These are areas of interest that seem to be exclusive to me as an independent content creator. I'm very interested in this anthropological kind of thing that's happening and how the news channels, how they play into it by essentially not doing news and by doing drama, entertaining serial drama 24 hours a day in your homes replacing the old daytime shows and all the rest of it. You will remember when in people's houses, going back years, if you switched on the telly, you had afternoon quiz programmes or you had afternoon soap operas. In the UK, we had Australian ones, not just neighbours. We had sons and daughters, love and laughter, tears of sadness and happiness. How do you know that shit, Richie? I just do. I'm a geek. I know that shit. You think that Graham Booth of Trigger Warning is a geek? You think he's a geek? He is a geek. I'm a proper geek. I know this stuff. So you switch on TV. You go into people's houses now. Either BBC 24 or Sky News is on constantly. It really is. I kid you not. I fancied the bad woman, Patricia, played by Rowena Wallace when I was a young boy and hormones were raging. I fancied Patricia. I always fancied the bad women when I was younger. Loved the bad girls. Loved the baddies. I rooted for the baddies. As long as they were women anyway. So the eye paper then. Brexit deal impossible as EU leaders reject PM's proposals. As I talk to you now, Adam Bolton is on Sky News. You've got Jeremy Vine on Channel 5 soon. You have the BBC programmes, Naga Munchetti, And all of them, they're all full of the drama of this. What's going to happen next? Well, we're not going to leave the European Union. That's what's going to happen next. Yeah, yeah. Financial Times, anybody? Johnson urges Varadkar to keep talking as Brexit deal hopes fade. This makes me belly laugh that Leo Varadkar is speaking on behalf of Ireland. You see, the European Union has to retain some sort of a mask, some semblance of a disguise. It can't be seen to be this big, horrible, fascistic, undemocratic organisation that it is. A big juggernaut. So it pretends, it puts out people like Leo Varadkar to give the illusion of sovereignty for countries. That Leo is not happy about what's happening in Ireland and he has to speak up for the Irish and the Good Friday Agreement. It's bullshit. Leo Varadkar is told what to say and he does what he's told. That's how it is. If Leo Varadkar was really speaking up for the Irish, he wouldn't allow three Germans land in Dublin airport every year to come and approve his government's budgets. He wouldn't allow that, you see. He would say, well, who the, who the hell are you to be coming over here to tell us what we can't spend and what we can't spend on public services, eh? Because he doesn't do that. Because Leo is a puppet. He's a puppet, is the merry Indian. But they're trying to make it out as if he's some sort of hero. It's great stuff, this. If you know what's really going on, it's very funny. We're going around in miracles. Boom, 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 boom. Dish, says the Metro, again alluding to the conversation between Johnson and Angela Merkel yesterday afternoon. Yeah, with Jesus, huh? Is that diet coke? Is it none of your fucking business? Is what it is. It's not actually. No, it's not diet. I'm fourteen stone, six pounds in weight, six foot five inches tall. And it's all in proportion, ladies. So I don't need to have diet drinks at the moment. It's all in proportion. The fact that you say that means it isn't. Okay, it isn't. The Daily Express. That's it then. PM's angry clash spells end of deal. Same again. Ben Stokes' wife laughs off choke attack claims. That was also in the mirror. Some paparazzi took a photograph of Ben Stokes and his wife Claire. Ben's a national hero. They say this. I'm, I'm a cricket lover, much to the ire of my Irish family and friends. They can't believe it. 
You fucking sell out, Richie. No, I just like cricket. I explained why before I spent um, five days at Old Trafford in 2005, 2005, sitting with people like Neville Neville, God rest his soul, Angus Deaton, sex fiend. <laughs> Have I got news for you? He's not a sex fiend, by the way. Um, I wasn't sitting with them because they were my friends. I just happened to be sitting with them. I got tickets through Kellogg's because the future Mrs. Allen worked for Kellogg's, which is on Talbot Road in Manchester. Right across the road from the cricket ground. Right across the road it is. Nobody wanted to go, all of these yanks. All of these fucking yanks. With their baseball. They didn't want to go. So the future Mrs. Allen said to me, what are you doing for the next five days? At the time I was DJing in Manchester. Making a living in Manchester DJing. And I was also doing a postgraduate course at Salford University. So I said, yeah, I can skip uni. There was no uni, it was in the summer. I can um, go to um, the cricket. So I went to the cricket for the crack. And fell in love with it. Fell in love. And I became this boring as arseholes guy then who acts like an expert on it. You know those people? They find something new. And all of a sudden they become an expert and they know fuck all. I was in pubs talking about it and there were guys just mortified. (laughs) But 15 years later, and I know the difference between second slip and silly point. So I love cricket. And Ben Stokes, bit of a national hero because he, at Headingley, he, um, well, it was him that saved that test at Headingley. Well, he didn't save it. He won it for England with that extraordinary innings when he scored a century. And when the number 11 batsman came in to join him, the spinner, he, um, they still needed 80 runs or 73 runs. And he put on an amazing... Uh, feat of batsmanship but he was also central to England winning the World Cup so earlier on again in the summer so he's a bit of a hero allegedly a paparazzi took a picture of him with his hand around his wife's face at an awards due last week claiming that he choked her but it actually happened in front of their friends and security and other people who were attending it so it's unlikely that he attacked her like that She's saying it's outrageous that he was just being friendly with her. But um, the papers are, some of the papers are suggesting otherwise, that she's the victim of domestic abuse. Um, I don't know. I don't think it's likely that in the middle of a of a foyer at a big sports awards do with friends around and photographers, it's unlikely he attacked his wife then. But what do I know? I'm not, you know, I'm not... Um, I'm not uh, apologising for anybody doing anything they shouldn't be doing. Uh, The Times, Johnson gets last chance to keep Brexit deal alive. The Times alleges that he can persuade Leo Varadkar. Again, Leo Varadkar is a nobody. He's a nothing, a non-entity. He has no clout whatsoever. So this does make me giggle, this notion that he can go to Leo. He was only with Leo a week ago, wasn't he? In Bolly all clear. Daily Mail, the roar number 10 cannot ignore. An astonishing 356,000 people signed a petition to end the dementia care scandal. As we hand it to Downing Street, uh, will the PM now deliver on his promise? The Daily Mail has been good in, um, I suppose you could call this campaign, campaigning journalism. Um, to, end the scan- to end the scandal of people who all their lives paid taxes and who paid national insurance, having to sell their homes and their property to pay for care when they succumb to things like dementia. It is fucking scandalous. It is. And fair play to the Daily Mail. And they're also going with the Ben Stokes uh, story there as well. Alrighty. The Sun. Cha-cha chaps. Haven't a clue what that's about. Didn't look at that. Dancing on Ice's all-male pair. All right, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah, it was inevitable, wasn't it, that Dancing on Ice and Strictly will get same-sex couples dancing. Sure, why not, you know? Ultimately, why not? You know, same-sex couples do exist. and If you have same-sex couples that can dance, I don't know. But I'm going to be honest, and I'm saying this to to uh, my gay friends and I do have gay friends I don't have too many black friends I have no lesbian friends 
I'm not diverse enough, really. I have no business being on the year. I'm just not fucking diverse enough. I have no vertically challenged friends. There are no dwarfs that I pal around with. And I have no friends in wheelchairs anymore. I used to have. But um, I have plenty of gay friends. If I was a brilliant ballroom dancer, now, (laughs) I can barely put one foot in front of the other, even when I'm running. If I was a brilliant ballroom dancer, and I was on Strictly, I'm not going to lie. Richie, we've got... What's his name? What's his name? What's the gay guy's name? Who presents... um, Oh, Ryland. Ryland. Is that his name? Ryland? 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 Ryland or Ryland? He's um, taking over supermarket sweep now. This guy's gay. So if I'm the brilliant ballroom dancer, if I'm the pro, no chance of that. But if I am, Richie, will you be Ryland's partner? No fucking way. (laughs) It's as simple as that. No! Why? I'm not gay. It doesn't matter, Richie. It's not about sex. It's got nothing to do with sexuality. Just dance with the guy. No! No, I won't. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. But then... (laughs) Maybe I would. I don't know. No. I would say no for very selfish reasons. Because I'd want one of those Coronation Street or EastEnders actresses to dance with. Or Stacey Dowley. Maybe. I don't know. What do my gay friends think of that? Am I a right bastard now for saying that I wouldn't dance with the gay guy? I danced with a trans um, gender woman for for half a night at a party about two years ago, three years ago. Um, Mandy, it's good stuff, no problem with that. Me and Mandy, we we cut a rug so we did. Is that what you say? And, uh, yeah. Daily Star, choke was just a joke. They love these stories, don't they? It's not a great picture, is it? But then again, a picture is but a millisecond in time, isn't it? You'd like to see what happened before and after, but of course... I'm sure the paparazzo, the Pavarotti, as the Edge calls them, that's the Edge from U2, by the way, he refers to them as the Pavarotti. I'm sure the paparazzo has got... They don't use film anymore, it's all digital. I'm sure he's got 20 pictures, right? Be honest, release the rest of the pictures, you fucker. So we so we know. Okay. Shall I read a few comments, shall I? Thanks to Brian Allen for the super chat donation. How are you, Brian? No relative, no relation. It's a great name though, A-double-L-E-N. Brian Allen. Great name. Well, I, I might have told you this. When I was in radio years ago, in commercial radio, people used to assume in the industry that my name was a stage name. And I was so naive, I didn't realise that many of the radio presenters I was encountering at awards do, at awards dues, awards functions, I didn't realise that many of them were using names that sounded good on radio. I'm such a naive arsehole sometimes. But he used to say to me, Richie, a great name, Richie Allen. What's your real name? I said, fucking Richie Allen. <laughs> yeah, Richie Allen. He used to be like, Richie Allen. And I met a guy called Ross Allen. This is a true story. As God, as God, as God is in the sky. This is a true story. Met a guy. He came to work at WLRFM. Uh, gay guy, funnily enough. A lot of gays in television and radio. A lot of gays. Many of them are very talented people, of course. And uh, Ross came up. Ross is gay. And he said, uh, uh, how are you, Richie? Um, I'll be working with you. Ross Allen. I said, how are you doing, Ross? He said, my real name is Connor Cudahy. <laughs> I was like, yeah, Connor Cudahy. Good name, good Irish name. Maybe it's, maybe the jingles. Not too great in the jingles. Connor Cudahy. But then you see, Connor Cudahy in the mid morning with the Regents talk. Yeah. But nothing beats Richie Allen. See? But that's my real name. Hi to Schittler's List. Hi to Charlie Girl, who was misgendered. During the radio show last night. Nothing worse than being misgendered, eh? Nothing worse. Hi to Richard Murray. To Desmond Knox. Lovely stuff. To Graham Booth. Richie never dances with me. You never ask me, Graham. To be refused, one must first ask. Martin Ellen says you're a deviant, Richie. You do it. 
I probably wouldn't give a shite, to be honest. Jean Ann says, why? Because dance is about the male and the female principal playing together, says Jean Ann. Get in there, Jean Ann. Hi to Carl Taylor, by the way. To Rebecca McCoo. How you doing, Rebecca? To Jesus Jones, the pro rebel separatist. Hi to Cass Holdsworth. Cass, thanks so much for supporting the programme. I really appreciate that, Cass. I will get around to individually thanking those who did donate last night and uh, and, and, and the new um, the new listeners who set up um, new recurring uh, donations. Because really all I want people to do is to get two or three pounds and set it up as a monthly for the radio show. That's all. We're not asking a lot, really. You know, if you can afford it, that is. You know what I mean? And on television, Jean Ann says, Irish Radio reads every single one of the English Premier Division matches results first ad nauseum. They do. They do. I'm not living at home now, of course, but I know they do. And Jean Ann says, you're getting through the cricket moment how Ireland and England are much more together than ever will be with the European Union. That's a good point as well. Hi to Pierre, who says, who cares about cricket? Well, I fucking do, Pierre. I just told you. <laughs> but I care more about rugby league. I see the Salford Reds are rising. This Saturday, 6 o'clock, live, Old Trafford, the grand final. Salford Red Devils against the St. Helens Saints, I suppose. Hi to Colleen in South Carolina. How you doing, Colleen, in South Carolina? What does my pal John Rorty think in New York? John is gay. Really nice guy. Chat with John on Twitter. John has been married to, to his fella for a long, long time. John is currently building or renovating an old kind of colonial type house. It looks lovely on Twitter. John Rorty. Hope I didn't wind John up by saying I wouldn't dance with a man if I was a professional tango dancer. Look, we're all fucking whores, aren't we? Give me enough money and... Yes, I would! <laughs> you sellout, bally gammon bastard. I am. Hi to Paddy Dunn, who's a new listener. How you doing, Paddy? I love watching the cricket, especially when anyone beats the English. Well, Ireland played them in a test match recently and we skittled them for 80 in the first innings. I was doing cartwheels around the house. But we still lost the test. Yeah. Listen, uh, hi to J Jacqueline in Australia. Richie, what's your take on a serious situation with Turkey, the Kurds, US, etc.? Tell you what, Jacqueline, check out my interview with Stephen Lendman on the radio show last night. It's online now. Uh, thanks to John Kerr for the super chat donation. Thank you, John. Hi to Sean. Hi to Les Hewitt. Greg Parker, who, da who dances like Mr. Bean. <laughs> yeah, see that's giving me a mental image straight away. Jean Ann says, as God is in the sky rich, so that's great. You're no longer an atheist then. I'm agnostic now, Jean Ann. I've I've graduated. John Parsons in Salford, another friend of mine, John, has said has said something on the super chat here as well, on the chat. Look, I'm agnostic, right? Okay. Fucking don't be crowing triumphantly. I don't know how we got here. I don't know how we got here. It had to be by some sort of design, surely. But not by some bored, shitless, always there creation who decided to create us in his own image for the laugh. Fuck that nonsense. What have I got for you? This upset me. Maybe I am turning into a conservative Christian. Maybe I am and I'm not. I'm a Bolivarian socialist. I always will be. I thought you said identity politics is, is destructive. It is. My outlook on life could be most compared to Bolivarian socialism. I'm not a conservative Christian. I'm not a Christian. But Jesus Christ, this is not nice, is it? A Polish woman has won a big settlement from the NHS because they didn't make it clear to her that she was carrying a child with Downs and she gave birth to the boy. And she's upset, didn't want to have a child with Downs, would have aborted and alleged that bringing up a child with Downs is going to cost an awful lot of money. Now, look, I'm not jumping in on this woman at all. Jesus Christ, let's have cogent, rational, calm and measured discussions about these things. Not abusive, accusatory, pointing the finger without giving a second 
thought to putting yourself in somebody else's shoes. But this fucking wound me up this morning. Not her. But this idea that they're going to compensate her. There was a language barrier issue, apparently. Okay, whose fault is that? All right, you could make the point, maybe the NHS maybe needs to have people who understand these languages because we're very diverse now. And because when you open the doors to all the Eastern European countries through the European Union, you have a lot of Eastern European folks in the country. But I just don't like the idea of having an abortion because the child has Downs. I do know people with Down syndrome. I used to coach um, uh, children. I used to spend time with children with disabilities, but with Downs. And they're the best in the world, aren't they? And I don't like the idea that, you know, we'll test for Downs and then we'll terminate. Anyway, the guy, uh, Justice J, who... Um, it's not Alexis J, is it? I'm not sure. No, it's Mr. Justice J, it's not Alexis J. He said... The sonographer's initial question to Mrs. Mordell had been abrupt and her follow-up didn't go far enough. The judge said Miss Mordell's midwife failed in her duty to explore why the screening had not taken place when she initially agreed to it. She didn't have a principled objection to the termination. Had she been informed, had she been informed the baby had downs, I'm satisfied she would have proceeded with the termination. Then Justice Jay said, nothing I have said should be interpreted as suggesting that the birth of a child with Down syndrome must be seen as unwelcome. Well, it's depressing. Anyway, it's in the Times. It's worth discussing that in detail at some stage, I think. You know, but anyway. This made me laugh. Extinction Rebellion, do you see this? So the police have now said, look, you've got to clear the areas or, you know, there's going to be a disbursement or a dispersal uh, order will get you out. But they're, they're, they're incredibly undermanned, the police. They can't really do anything about these people that have caused this massive uh, disruption to business in London. They just can't do anything about it. They're fooked, the police. Somebody said, bring in the, um, the what are they called in England? The Territorial Army. Really? That's a bit spooky, isn't it? Bring in the Territorial Army. So you're going to bring people in with guns? No, let's not fucking do that, please. Somebody else said, bring in the Territorial Army, but don't give them any ammunition. I don't want to see any fucking army walking up and down the streets, thank you very much, telling people to get off the streets. What sort of a precedent would that set? These people are idiots. They are wrong, 100% wrong. The science doesn't support them. But I don't support the army being brought in to get them off the streets, I really don't. Much as they really do boil my piss. They boil my piss. That's true, by the way. You watch enough of these news reports and you go to the toilet and it stings. It fucking stings when you're urinating. It's not funny. There are, there's always a bit of mirth. There's always a bit of mirth. Though, did you see this guy? What's his name again? Lord Fraser of, Car of Corrigarth. Is that how you pronounce it? Lord Fraser of Corrigarth. Of course, we know who he is. He's a former Conservative Party treasurer and a major donor to the Tories. So this almost goes to the enemy of my enemy is my friend because it made me laugh, belly laugh, to see him out in his dressing gown <laughs> shouting at these people, telling them to get off his street. By Jove, you're making a terrible racket. Can you please get off my street? They just laughed at him. They're banging drums and playing music outside his house. He wasn't too happy. Hi to Isabel Jack and to Mr. Sin. And thanks uh, so much for supporting the programme today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Get off my street, you unwashed vermin. Yeah. Ah, go on then. Jean Anne will love this. Jean Anne Crowley. The actress of great distinction. Very distinguished woman in many areas. Jean Ann. I love old Jean Ann. Young Jean Ann. Young Jean Ann. TV shows will have to meet diversity targets on gender, race and sexuality among characters to be able to win BAFTAs. The Awards Academy declares. So this is not law. 
It's not low. Thank God. Not yet, anyway. But the BAFTAs are saying, if you're, if you want your production, your show, your film, your your television drama, to be considered for awards, well, you need to have a few lesbian dwarfs in there. Well, they're not quite saying that. But not far off it. You need to have diverse casts, diverse directors, and you need to have diverse crews. So the key grip, the key grip, will need to be more diverse. So you're going to have the hilarious scene unfolding on location somewhere in Skegness, on a on a on a windswept beach, where a, where a big drama is being filmed. Of a dwarf trying to reach up like this with a microphone like this so the actors can be heard like this. This is what's going on. I know that's a bit stupid. I know I'm a bit childish. But that's where it's all leading. Isn't it? (laughs) I want to be a key grip. I want to be a dolly grip. But you're four foot fucking two. Ah, you fucking hateful bastard! But I'm not being hateful. You can't do it, you little shit. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, huh? How does the TV show meet the diversity rules in order to be considered... Hi to Maniac76, by the way. Thank you, Maniac76. How does the TV show meet the diversity rules? Well, you need to meet at least two of four overall standards. On-screen cast, storyline, production crew, access to the industry, exhibition and distribution. And it lays it out there how you would come into line with the BAFTA recommendations to make sure you've got plenty of diversity. 50-50 gender balance. 20% of the cast coming from an ethnic minority. Uh, and 7% or, or 7% of the cast being deaf or disabled. There you are. And if you want to see the full requirements, go to the BAFTA website. There they are. Period dramas like Downton Abbey, they might struggle to meet certain requirements, such as 20% of the cast belonging to an ethnic minority, but they could also fill their quota in other ways. They could have a diverse crew. That'd be brilliant, wouldn't it? So you have Downton Abbey being filmed on location, all these white people, and behind the cameras, all these black dudes and (laughs) black women. Why not? But that wouldn't suit the snowflakes either, would it? Look at that, look! That'd be like the old slave days, wouldn't it? The old slavery days. This is all mad shit, you know? Yeah. Jean Ann can articulate this better than I can. Let's get Jean Ann back on the radio show next week sometime, just to talk about these things. She's a brilliant commentator on these issues and many others. Let's get her back on for the crack. But not... To, not, not to jest because it is serious what does it mean for the arts what does it mean for individual expression it means a lot I would suggest remember this all this is going back years look at this guy Tunde Ogungbasan diversity chief at the BBC he was I'm not sure he still is he might have vacated the position and somebody else might have come in but last year we lampooned him on the Richie Allen radio show because He said the BBC is not diverse enough and he actually said that more lesbians are needed at the BBC. He did say that at all areas of the BBC. They found out that there was nearly 400 trans people working at the BBC, which is an amazing thing. An amazing thing, really. And he said, yeah, we're doing well, but we don't have enough lesbians. Not enough lezers. There are not enough lezers. Not enough carpet munchers at the BBC. And the existing lesbian staff at the BBC, they were like, absolutely. Get some more lezers in. This is insane. Yeah, we can giggle about it. And I can be very immature about it, which I am. But it's not funny. It's not fucking funny. Neither is Extinction Rebellion. Getting in the way of people. Who need to go to hospital. Uh, this might be just one example. It mightn't have happened too often. Oh, I, I accept that. But they're getting in the way of people who have got to get out of cars and go to hospital for treatment for things like cancer. You know, enough's enough now. The police need to get these feckers off the streets. 
And they need to, they need to, I don't want to say punish them. You fucking, these people, you don't put people in jail. But they need to get them away from capital cities in some way by some punitive measure that gives them a real moment of pause when it comes to doing it again. Because they just keep doing it again. They release them on bail and the fuckers do it again. So we got to do something about that. Speaking about um, choking, Ben Stokes, is porn putting you in danger? Tracy Cox reveals how young men are forcing women to imitate sex moves they've seen on screen from choking to face slapping. Yes, is the answer. It is putting you in danger. Particularly if you are younger. Because the porn watched by young men now is exclusively violent. Brutal fucking shit. Crap. How any man could get a stiffy watching it, I have no idea. A woman bent over a chair or a bed and two or three men doing fairly heinous things to her. You get what I'm saying? I know that people have children in their room, so I'm not going to say anything else. Men are seeing it, and it is all they are seeing, young men. Is it influencing them in the bedroom? You're damn right it is. So what does it mean ultimately? Without dwelling too much on this, what is the, what is the consequence of that? The death of intimacy. And I said this on, the, on, on, on this silly program last week on this live stream. The death of intimacy. The death of um, finding beauty in the female form as it stands. The female form as it stands. Looking at Caroline, the future Mrs. Allen, before she gets into bed and seeing how beautiful she is. Look, she's amazing. And being aroused by that. Gone. Not in my generation, but in generations behind us. This is all they're seeing. Brutal sex. The big websites, Pornhub, TripleX.com, their home pages, packed with instant videos of brutal sex that they call hardcore. This is what young guys are seeing. And if they're getting off on that, well, intimacy is dead. No intimacy. Remember John Cleese? Remember? Monty Python's The Meaning of Life, one of the funniest fucking scenes in film history where John Cleese is giving sex education to the lads in the school. Hilariously funny scene. One of the guys is looking out the window. <laughs> Do you remember that? Bored while he's talking about intercourse. And he's throwing dusters at them. And he asks one of the, boy, the boys how to stimulate the, the female. And the boy says, um, either kiss or touch the clitoris. And John, John Cleese says, what's wrong with a kiss, boy? It's very pertinent, that, today. Yeah, what's wrong with a kiss? What's wrong with intimacy? But there's an agenda here. There is. And I know some people watch me on this, and they watch or listen to the radio show and think, crazy, crazy, silly Irish guy making extraordinary leaps. No, it's an agenda. Of course it is. Jesus Christ. Not good. This is not good either. Look, I hate these people. Um, to my black viewers, look away now. Although I know I don't need to say that. My black viewers are as hard as nails. They don't give a fuck. Times, uh, I'll walk if I'm racially abused, says Tammy Abraham. You know what he can do, this fucking privileged idiot who earns £200,000 a week for kicking a ball? He can fuck right off, is what he can do. Fuck right off. England are playing two European Championship qualifiers. In Eastern Europe. If I hear any abuse, I'm walking off. You know what I would do if I was his manager now? Gareth Southgate. But of course he won't do it. I would drop him. I would drop him. Are you now, Tammy? Are you? Are you? If a few goons make monkey chants. And it'll only be a few, by the way. If it happens in Eastern Europe, it'll only be a few. It'll be 40 or 50 dickheads. Fucking Egypt, right? Who would argue with that? But you're going to walk off the pitch, are you? Aren't you a lovely guy, Tammy? Thousands of England fans have paid up to £1,000 a man and woman each to go to the games, but fuck them, right? Eh? Fuck you. I'm offended! I'm offended! Just get on with the game, pal. The way to deal with these dickheads is put the ball in the back. Not once, not twice, but thrice. And then go over to them like that. What was that again? What was that again? You fucking Neanderthals. Eh? 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 
That's how you deal with it. Or you just ignore it. Just ignore it, Tammy. Because you can't traverse life and not be confronted by a few arseholes. You come across them every day of the week. Arsehole. He's an arsehole. Very talented, very gifted young man. Plays for Chelsea. He's had a brilliant start to the season. Watched him at the weekend. Lovely player. Very expressive player. But a fucking Egypt. A millennial. Get over yourself, pal. And think about somebody else for a change. If it was me, and of course I'll trigger black folks now. Oh, how, how dare you? You couldn't understand what it's like to be black. Of course I couldn't. I can think, you know, I can imagine. If it was me, oh Christ, would I be fucking getting stuck in on that pitch, eh? Eh? I'd be all over the place. Chasing, pressing, up high. Getting chances, making chances. And as we're walking off the pitch, I'd be like that. Hey, what was that again? What was that again? About monkeys? Yeah. That's how you deal with idiots. Or you ignore them. It's up to you. This made me laugh in the times. Facebook and Google know more about you than any spy agency. (laughs) You better believe it. Whose fault is that though? Yours. It's your fault. Because you go on Facebook, you tell them everything. You treat Facebook like, I don't know, some sort of... The Samaritans? Is that a stretch? You treat it like a psychotherapist, like a, like a shrink. You go on there and you tell it everything. Everything! What you like, who you like, where you like, what you've done, what you will do, what you might do, what you'd like to do, every ambition you have, everything you've ever done, your political opinions, you give them everything. And you don't give a second thought to it. And then you complain then. <laughs> I'm getting these targeted adverts. Of course you are, you fucking agent. You tell them everything. And GCHQ, Sir David Ormond. Is it Ormond? I should know this stuff off by heart. David Ormond. David Ormond, yeah. Um, they, they have more info on everybody than we do. Yeah, you lying bastard. You want us to believe they're not giving it to you, eh? It's wonderful. It is the elite wet dream, this. Oh, fucking Trump. Oh, fucking Hillary. Oh, my brother. I had a big row with my mum. Oh, I'm going to Blackpool. Oh, I'm going to Spain in a couple of weeks' time. Oh, I'm fucking doing this. You give them every detail of your life. You give them your location. You give them everything. (laughs) And then you complain about it. Makes me laugh. Ah, be Jesus, huh? Lovely. By the way, I've invited John Kitson back on the programme because they're having a bit of success there in Totnes with the old 5G. Um, I could have brought John on when, when Robin Kelly was on the other night, but I thought, no, give it a day or two. I'll bring John on tonight. Uh, tomorrow, Thursday, is the second week, so every second Thursday, we have a phone-in. We had one two Thursdays ago, we'll have one tomorrow. Priority given to people who've never phoned in before. Keep that in mind now. All right. I'm not, I'm not saying I won't take you on, but I, I do like to hear from new people as well. And we're lucky like that when we do the phone in, we do get a lot of brand new people. Isn't it lovely? Is Hillary going to enter the race? Don't tempt me, says Hillary, after Trump took the pish out of her on Twitter. I think that crooked Hillary should enter the race. And Hillary tweeted back. Don't tempt me, do your job. Is she going to enter the race? Does it matter? Who gives a fuck? Both of them are as bent as S-hooks. S-hooks. If you're young watching this, look it up. Look up S-hook. Bent, corrupt, filthy, vile people. Trump and Hillary, who cares? That's democracy. Here are two criminals out of 300 million people. That's democracy, is it? Pick from two criminals, yeah? Yeah. We get to do the same here. Pick from criminals. Liars. And the um, Brexit fear-mongering, well, the hysteria just uh, gets even more and more, well, surreal. (laughs) Gonna run out of toilet paper. We're gonna fucking run out of toilet paper. Apparently. We're not. We're not, of course. 
So why don't we get entrepreneurs in Nottingham, in Basingstoke, in Basingstoke, in Bristol, in Edinburgh, in Aberdeen. Why don't we get entrepreneurs opening up toilet paper factories? Why not? Let's make our own fucking toilet paper, eh? Let's make our own toilet paper. You can jerk off with pride then if you're a young man. You can jerk off with pride using (laughs) UK made toilet paper. Yes. There won't be so much shame in masturbation because you're, you're, you're cleaning up with toilet paper made in Basingstoke. Proud to be British. <laughs> or Irish in my case. <laughs> Fuck. Oh yeah. You're not very funny. I know I'm not very funny. I make myself laugh though. I'm going to leave you with this. Talk about programs backfiring. Sex offenders get to sit around with psychotherapists in group sessions to deal with their deviancy. But apparently it's only making them more horny. I've never had so many deviant thoughts. A sex offender has blown the whistle on the treatment programme. He said that by listening to other sex offenders talking about their crimes, it turns me on. Yeah. This is no joke. It's true. I wonder who's getting off on it. The psychotherapists? Because apparently in these sessions involving several sex offenders, they are asking them to be very graphic. Why? I don't want to know the fucking details. You know, if I'm trying to rehabilitate a sex offender, uh, okay, you might need to uh, impress upon him or help him come to an understanding because psychotherapy is not about imposing your will on the subject. Psychotherapy is about helping the subject confront the dark the darkest recesses of his soul to understand the impact it has on the victim and on him and to get him to move away from it. Why do they want such detail in the sessions? I don't want the fucking details. It's horrifying. But apparently they go into great detail and it makes them all horny. That's not good, is it? I would have suggested. But what do I know, eh? I know fuck all about anything. Is that it? I think so. A few quick comments. Hi to Commander Scaramanga. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hi to Joe Public. How you doing, Joe? Hi to Wendy Bell. <laughs> Sorry, Wendy. There's no need for that smut. I'm well aware of it. I can't help myself, though. Hi to Chris, who says spaffing up the water is the British way. Hi <laughs> to Pete Blood. How you doing, Pete? Newspaper sales will go, up the, will go through the roof if there's no bog roll, says Paddy. Very good, Paddy. Lovely. Lovely job, Lee. John Rorty says, fuck no to Hillary. Hag, says John. <laughs> Even Donald is better than Hillary for John. I, I respect everybody's opinion. Greg Parker says, if there was internet porn when I was a lad, I never would have left the house. That's what we had the magazines for. That's what you have the magazines for. We used to go to England to watch football matches when I was a teenager. On the ferry. We used to go from either the North Wall, Dublin, or from Ross Lair, And we went to Hollyhead. And we got a bus or a train up to Manchester. Top shelf magazines were illegal in Ireland at the time. You couldn't even get Playboy. So we used to travel to watch the football with a list, with an order for various magazines. From horny young men back home. Magazines like Fiesta. Do you remember Fiesta? Yeah. And there was one that a lot of lads liked. It was called Legs something or other. Legs something or other. Not a swear word. Legs something or other. We used to bring back all these magazines in our in our in our in our hold alls. And they would be passed around. Very good. Right. That's it then, right for today. I'll see you at um, 5 o'clock on the radio show, at 5 o'clock UK time on the radio show on the usual channels. Let me just give a shout out again to, um, uh, go to triggerwarning.tv. If you want to go to Meet Space, which is on Saturday, November 2nd in Manchester. There's not many tickets left at all, there aren't really. Uh, 
It's a free speech event being put on by Graham Booth and Hayden Hewitt and Alex Doust. Fucking Alex. Um, Triggermorning.tv and I've been invited to come along and talk about free speech and stuff like that. So it'll be good fun. But it's not a case of you coming and meeting the heroes of the truth or industrial complex. Oh, I love triggering people. No, you'll be doing a lot of participating. You'll be speaking a lot yourself. So come along. Triggermorning.tv to see what tickets are available and um, I, I look forward to seeing you there. I'm going to love you and leave you now. Thanks for watching this nonsense and I will talk to you at five where, as I said, John Kitson is among the guests. You see, this is good, isn't it? People are doing things. People are doing things and are giving a bit of a halt or bringing about a halt to the gallop of the 5G brigade. So I want to get John Kitson on. The Daily Mail spoke about it on uh, Monday. I could have talked about it with John on Monday, of course. But um, it's it's a running and running issue. So John will come on today. And um, that's lovely. And tomorrow, Thursday, don't forget the phone-in. Keep that in mind as well. I will talk to you at five. Bye.